thanks for joining me on my first ever YouTube painting video. A lot of you will have found me through my brush licking Instagram page. Uh, I've been painting Kit Bash Powerhead's wonderful skull dread that he made for me. Um, I think it's a Leviathan Dreadnought that's been heavily modified into the, the Black Templars theme. Um, and we've been going for a sort of a, a bright but grim dark vibe. Um, this video is going to show you how I painted the uh, cream white shoulder pads. I've already done one as you can see in the video, uh, but I had so many people asking how I did it and how I achieved the effect, so I thought I'd share it. Um, I'm starting off with a base coat of AK Acrylics Grey Brown. It's uh, probably one of my favourite colours. It has a very good opacity and covers black very, very well. Um, it's quite dilute in this version, so in this video, so required a lot of coats to, to get a nice smooth finish. Um, and I've sped up the footage because nobody needs to see me painting in real time. Um, I think in the end it took five or six coats, quite dilute, to get a really nice smooth finish. Um, but it's worth not like rushing this stage because whilst it's not the most fun, it it sets you up for the rest of it. The smoother and more consistent your base coat is going to be, the cleaner stage you have to work with for the later layers um, and the better the, the final look is going to be. So now we're starting to have a more consistent base coat of the AK Grey Brown. We're almost ready to start the next stage. So I'll get out my AK Warm Grey, which is a, another really, really good colour. Um, I really love all of the AK paints. They, um, they cover everything very, very well. There's only a few in the range that I'm not so keen on. Most of them are brilliant. Um, warm Grey is a really nice one. It's, uh, as the name suggests, warm and grey. But it's quite a bit lighter than the grey brown and uh, I mix a little bit of it in with the grey brown to just create a sort of a 50-50 mix um, and gradually start building that up uh, on top of the um, existing base coat. I have quite a, a scratchy style of painting which you'll see once I've finished mixing and um, by doing lots and lots of quite dilute scratchy lines and very short brush strokes it builds up a sort of a texture and um, especially if you focus your, your scratchy brush strokes towards the same kind of point, you can build up a, a light source or an idea of the overall sort of um, light on the piece. Um, here on this one, there's quite a hard um, shoulder pad and the, the line the, the, where it sort of bends around and then drops down on that sort of strong vertical I wanted to ensure that there was a really dark bit at the top to contrast with the really light bit that was going to um, to suggest where the light was catching. You can sort of see across the curve of the, uh, the skulls and then the non-metallic metal. I've already got some high points built out there um, and I'm just trying to continue that line across and down um, to really get, to sell that effect of having, of having real light hitting. Um, in most of my models, I tend to look as if there's a, a light at the sort of top left, slightly in front of the model and um, and above, and that just sort of by having that vision in mind as to where the light's catching and where it's coming from, you can then build a bit of a scene and just keep keep going over scratchy little lines, just keep building them up when they're uh, quite deep dilute as the paint is in this one. The uh, extra layers keep building up and building up and it looks like uh, they blend all together and it starts looking like a nice texture um, which I think feels the sort of grim dark aesthetic that we were going for and um, and just builds up a, a look of lots of battle damage as well as texture to the armor and it catching light and adding some interest um, in later stages I use some of these natural um, changes and marks and highlight them independently as if they're battle damage or little scrapes or scratches 
that the dreadnoughts picked up in his years of service. Um, but for now, yeah, it's just a 50-50, pretty dilute mix of AK Grey Brown and AK Warm Grey, gradually building up those high points and starting to build a picture of what we're going for. So now I'm mixing in even more of the warm grey and uh, getting much lighter and eventually we, we build all the way to just pure warm grey but still adding plenty of water and keeping the, um, the paint very very dilute. I tend to do these things by eye and just by feel when I'm painting. If, if I think it's too thick I add a bit more water, if not I add a bit more paint. But um, for this one if I had to say it I'd say the ratio was probably one part paint to four parts water. Um, but because of the nature of it being on a wet palette, I've already added, say, for example, two parts paint, the grey brown and then the warm grey. Um, so I'm more like eight parts water to create that really dilute vibe. Um, but as you paint more and more, you get a feel for how it's going to cover and what the opacity of the paint's going to be like. Um, and for pieces like this, I like to work with with really thin paints and just keep building up that texture even if it takes sort of 15 16 goes over the same thing with lots of these little scratchy lines that you can see me doing here it just builds up that texture um, and later on if we find that it's a little bit um, rough or, or isn't quite as smooth or as blended as we need to then we can use glazes which I, I get into in a little bit and we can glaze back in some shadows glaze in some highs to just smooth those transitions and make it all look a little bit cleaner. So now I'm mixing even more of the warm grey in and we're only a little step below pure warm grey at this point. Uh, again, more water, keep it really super dilute and just keep focusing on the high points, the, the edges of the armour, the points where the light is going to naturally hit. Um, sometimes I like to look at the model from the direction of the light and just see which faces of the armour are, are pointing straight towards the light source because those are the ones that are going to be the brightest and going to catch the most light. Um, and it's always a good practice, if you can, to have a dark point next to a high point because the contrast just really sells the scene a little bit more. Um, and in this instance, you can see the pictures building up, the, the, the sort of top left of the curve of the shoulder pad. And the edges that catch more light are often right next to some darker colour, which is usually the pure grey-brown. Um, and then that just that contrast just sort of fools the eye and really catches the attention to show that that's the high point, that's where the light's catching, and that's going to naturally have a shadow alongside it. So now it's, it's taking shape quite nicely. I'm giving a little bit of attention to the edges and now I'm starting to mix in some ivory, again from AK third gen paints and um, mix in a little bit of that, a bit more water, nice and dilute. And this is going to start highlighting those edges and bringing in and glazing up some of the, the high points. So this is a, a glaze consistency. So this is going to be one part paint to at least four parts water. Some colours require a little bit more, some colours require a bit less. Um, but all I'm doing here with this pure ivory mix is um, 
touching up the edges and touching up and glazing over the very high points. So what this is doing is both bringing more of a high to that highlight, but it's also blending in the earlier colours, the, the scratchy sort of battle damage lines that I'm building up with the earlier colours. They can end up looking a bit rough if you don't do some glazing afterwards. Um, so bringing these glazes and using this mix to just draw attention to the edges of the armour panels really just helps to, to tie it all together. I'm also just touching little little catches of light on the very edges of panel lines or where the armour changes direction just to really catch it and, and just show off the sculpt and show off the, the edges of the model. Again, everything I'm doing several times because I'm working with such dilute paint, it's, um, you just have to keep building it up and building it up. But it's better to work with really, really thin paint and just keep going over and over again than it is to, to come in heavy and then have to do lots of blending and lots of touching up afterwards. Um, I'm adding little highlights to just any armor panels that are pointing upwards. Um, I messed that bottom right knobble up a little bit but I'll come back and tidy that up with some some grey brown or warm grey later on. So now I've mixed in a little bit more of the warm grey in with the ivory and again glaze consistency and working mainly on the midtones and the transitions just to smooth those out and blend those out a little bit more and just to create those really smooth subtle transitions. Using glazes helps you to just bring darker colours into the light or make lighter colours dark um, and just work on the overall scene and the overall armour panel and make sure that it, it comes together how you want. And by the same token now I'm mixing up more of the grey brown and the glaze consistency and then using that to just darken out and you see blend in from the mids into the darks and just reinforce where the shadow areas should be and make sure that we've got a really clear sort of a highlight, a mid-tone and then into the shadow. Um, a glaze consistency is usually about a, a four parts water to one part paint but you very much have to sort of do it by eye. If you work on very small areas and you start putting the paint down and you realise that it's too thick then you can always go back but um, it is always better to be too, too dilute, too watered down and um, add more paint than it is to put too much paint on your model and then not be able to fix it. So I was finding the grey brown wasn't giving me enough depth so I picked out some leather brown also from AK Paints and uh, mixed in a little bit of a glaze. Here you go, so that's a tiny little bit of paint and a few drops of water. Um, and here I'm using it for some panel lines and just generally building in some darker shades right at the very bottom of the armour, but also at the, the top where it meets the, um, the brightest highlights. And you can see here I'm just blending a little bit of extra this leather brown right at the very top just to make the lights really stand out. And having that light, as I mentioned earlier, against a dark tends to sell the effect a little better. Um, and it's all about just the perception of colour and the perception of light. If we all paint just purely in the midtones, it all ends up looking a bit boring and dull. Whereas I find if you paint with some very highs and some very lows and you can get them right next to each other, then you can get a little bit more drama to your models, which, which I just think looks better. So again, I'm still going back and forth with all of my different glaze mixes and just tidying things up, smoothing out those transitions, adding a little bit more dark, a little bit more light, fixing things as and when I see them. So I've started to notice at this point that the high points are starting to become a little bit muted from too much glazing of the midtones. So I mix up a little bit more ivory into a glaze consistency and then start to just go over the high points again and just build up those highs to really make sure that they stand out. I think at this point it's pure ivory mixed with four parts water and just keep going over it, 
the, the secret with glazing is that you want to end your brush stroke where you want your brightest point because the way the water flows and the way the paint comes off of your brush it's always going to be at its thinnest at the point that you stop and lift your brush away so you can see a lot of my brush strokes are going towards the high points or the shade if that's what I'm doing at that point but on this side I'm just checking the other side seeing where its high points are and then just gradually blending up these highs just to match I don't want them to be as bright as on the other side because this is on the opposite side of the model um, so it's not getting as much of a direct hit of the light this is probably like a reflected light source or something coming from somewhere else um, but I want to vaguely match where it's looking and what it's where it's going um, just so that the whole model has that consistency here I'm just working around the edges because the more you can just highlight those edges with crisp edge highlights you just draw out all these little details and here you can see with this really crisp ivory line around the outside edge of the armor panel especially where it crosses the shadow or where it intersects with the shadows and the highlights it really just brings out that definition and separation and just makes it look look nice and crisp the thing with the edge highlights is I'm pretty much just using a slightly thicker mix it's probably a two part water one part paint mix and I'm just using the very edge of my brush or if I can't get my edge up to it then I'm just being very very careful and gentle with the tip of the brush just following the line of the panel but most of the time I'm using the edge of the brush not a lot of paint you can just about see on the side of the screen there's a white cloth and I just use that to take off any excess paint and then I just run the edge of my brush along the side of the, the panel just to leave that nice crisp highlight so we're going back to the leather brown but this time we're mixing in a little bit of black because we pushed the highs right up into the ivory color then I figured we needed something to just sort of take those darks even darker um, as well as a few panel lines and things so what I've done is I've mixed some gray brown with some AK black and here I am just painting it into the panel lines again this is probably two to three parts water one part paint it keeps it quite a, a wet mix um, quite dilute but it's just helping me to glaze in some shadows and make the bits that are supposed to be really super dark as dark as they can be especially towards the bottom of the shoulder pad or anywhere that the shadows would naturally fall such as under the purity seals or in any little recesses around the outside of the armor um, I also tried to put Put these super dark lines as close as I can to the highs again just for that contrast so now I'm starting to build up the battle damage so what I'm doing is I'm looking at where textures have naturally formed with all of my sort of stippling and my um, my scratchy lines and I tend to start off with a darker line and in this case this is that black and um, leather brown mix and I'm just picking out these couple of little lines just thinking about scratches and battle damage and things like that and now I'm going back to the the ivory and I'm just very carefully just picking out the edge of those black like those dark blacky leather brown lines um, the idea being that the dark is the the actual damage the the hole the sword mark the, the bullet hole whatever it is the actual scratch in the armor um, and because it's dark there's not much light getting in there but when you've created that sort of scratch in the armor you've also revealed a hard edge on the bottom side of that so by highlighting that it just sells the effect and makes it look like a real three-dimensional scratch so at this point I think I decided that the uh, the ivory highlights on the battle damage weren't quite they were a bit too strong so I'm just glazing over those really subtly with a bit of the um, leather brown again just to tie those in nicely with the armor around it it also just makes the damage not look too fresh and more more fitting and, and natural with its surroundings and while I'm at it I'm also blending a little bit of that leather brown just into the shadows and smoothing a few more of those transitions And then back to a little bit more glazing this time with the mid-tones with the warm gray mix from earlier again just smoothing the transitions keep going back and forth and working you work with the highs you work with the mids you work with the lows until you've got that 
nice smooth transition that you want. So now I'm pretty much finished with the ivory shoulder pads. So I'm going to switch over to the other side of my wet palette with my uh, mix that I've been using for the dark cold steel NMM uh, non-metallic metal. I'm using black, decap blue and off white. And as you can see, I've made a, a proper mess of my wet palette over the last few painting sessions. But essentially, I put down these three colours and I mix a little mid-tone in between the decap blue and the black and then another mid-tone in between the decap blue and the off-white. Start to mix in some water and then just create this whole variety of tones that I can then use. Um, I, I, when I filmed this, I didn't have a separate palette camera, which I'm, I'm working on at the moment. Uh, and hopefully that will make it much clearer in the future. But as you can see, so this is a blend of roughly 50-50 between the black and the decap blue, both from AK Paints. And what I'm doing on the uh, the steel trim of the shoulder pad and those little steel um, rivety type things, as well as the the joints where his arm is, his arm is going to connect later, uh, and the chain. So I'm just using that 50-50 mix of black and decap blue to start picking out the high points of the metal. Again, I'm thinking about both where the light will naturally hit from this sort of above and to the, to the sort of left as the audience is looking at, at the model. Um, so that's where the light's coming from. And I think it's, it's going to catch all of the high points that are pointing towards that. But then there's also going to be reflections and various other things that you want to take into account. Um, later on, when I paint more of this model, I'm going to do some some sort of lighting effects on the back, probably coming from those vents on the back of the dreadnought. And um, a lot of this will then get changed and adjusted depending on those light sources. So this is just putting in an overall, an overall vision of the natural ambient light that's going to be around the model. Again, we're just gradually blending in these little little lights on the, the black decap blue mix. Um, and then we start working higher and we get up to a little bit more of that decap blue. And the good thing about using the wet palette like this is that you've got that full range of tones. If you dip your brush in somewhere closer to where your black started, then you get the darker tones. And likewise, if you're working closer to the decap blue or to the off white, then you've got the lighter lighter tones and here we're using more of a decap blue mix touching just the high points the edges the the really bright points of the armor where the light's catching and gradually working our way up towards that off white for the the really high points but by using quite a, a dilute thinned paint at a sort of a two to one water paint ratio or a three to one you can be really controlled and just gradually build up this paint I'd rather go over the same piece about four times to get that really crisp high than I would just do it once because the benefit of going over it again and again is because of the opacity of the paint, the first coat won't show particularly well. The second coat will show a little bit better, third even more, and the fourth you're starting to get that pure colour that you've put down. But with each sort of subsequent coat if you put less and less if you cover less and less of the model you end up with a really natural transition a sort of a gradient between your original base color and to whatever highlight you're going towards So by this point, we're in a sort of a decap blue with a little bit of black and a little bit of the off white. And we're still just touching the high points and then thinking about any reflections that we might have. A good rule of thumb is that your brightest highlight is the one that's pointing directly towards the light source. And then your secondary reflections are going to be from the primary light source bouncing off of something else. Usually it's going to be the ground, but it might be something else. It might be something on the model. It might be that the light's catching an armor panel and then reflecting to an adjacent armor panel. Um, for simplicity's sake, I tend to just look at it coming, the main light coming from the sun, which would be above and 
to the right of the model as the model is sort of looking from the left as we're looking and uh, then bouncing off the ground so this one you can see I'm highlighting the rivets as if they're being caught from directly above and the chain as if it's being caught from above and the front and then just gradually blending in a little bit of a reflection on the bottom side in a bit but these are still the highs you can see catching the outside edge of these circular bits and the armor panel and then these are more reflected down at the bottom because there's no light source coming from there that would officially catch that part but it's just what you need to make it look nice so here we're getting a bit more off-white just to really boost this color and i think i'm also going to blend in a little bit just to to smooth once i get to pure off-white this is just picking out the very edges and the absolute high points and the thing with non-metallic metal painting is you need to have that really strong dark color and the really strong highlight for it to sell the effect if you spend too much time in the mid-tones and just sort of messing around in the middle it just ends up looking like you've, pa you've painted grey as opposed to metal having a really strong white and not very much of it as well is what sort of sells it and here I'm just picking out the outside edge of those rivets the top corners of the armour I'm doing a few little reflected highlights as well but that's just because it's a model and I want it to look pretty at the end of the day but mainly my attention is going to the very top pieces and just bringing that off white, pure off white. And at this point, I think it's a, a two parts water, one part paint mix. So it covers really sharply and really crisply in one go. Again, just using the edge of the brush just to highlight anything that's just, just needs that extra bit of contrast. It's not always about making it perfect as far as the lighting comes sometimes it's just making stuff look nice because of the scale of the things the model you want them to look nice from from a bit of a distance but um you also want to show off all the detail and especially all the work that was put into this dreadnought by kit bash you want to make it look good for him so there we have it that was the first ever youtube painting video that i've ever done um i hope you learned something from it and it wasn't too too cringe um, by all means follow me on instagram at brush licking and follow me and subscribe on here so that i can beat the algorithm and get some exposure um, big thanks to kitbash powerhead for the wonderful dreadnought that he's made i've very much enjoyed painting it um, and i've still as this video comes out i've still got quite a bit to do uh, i've recorded quite a few pieces along the way of the dreadnought so if you're interested in learning how i did it then do subscribe and follow me on Instagram and I'll uh, mention when the videos come out. Thanks very much.